17th of March 2023 is when Tanada cut ties with LIJ and it wasn't just his chin that was given a clean slate. A wrestler that many believed would never really get a chance to stand atop New Japan's mountain did so just 18 days later. But fast forward to him crying his way to the exit at Wrestle Kingdom and the once great Sonata feels like he was nothing more than a peak for Naito to conquer. But why? Well I have just five reasons why the Cold Skull star didn't shine as bright as most hoped. Number one, just four guys. Once Suzuki dismissed his army there was a lot of interest on where this might go. And while it mostly amounted to nothing, there was at least some interest when just four guys, then Taka, Taichi, Doki and Kanemaru, stuck together and promised to change the wrestling world forever. The problem was who these four guys were. Taka has been slotted as a low card guy even by junior heavyweight standards. His last win in an IWGP sanctioned one on one match that wasn't against a young line was Dragon Lee in 2017. Kanemaru, to be fair, has been presented a lot better than Taka including a lot of mid-table best of super junior finishes, KOPW title matches, and one of the better junior tag team title runs in recent memory. But this man is well into his 40s, and no one believes that this man is going to be given an important spot on the roster for any decent length of time. And don't you go believe in that tag league final, by the way. Losing the tournament final after switching factions in New Japan means things are going south for you, buddy. Doki is the only member of the four whose stock actually feels like it could potentially rise, he has no real credibility or beating anyone of note, and during the Four Guys feud against the United Empire at the start of the year, him and Taka existed to get hidden bladed into oblivion and to lose to Catch-22 in the faction's first title match. And then there is Taichi, their ace of the time, the only heavyweight of the group and therefore the only guy that could actually be a star. I could go on for hours about Taichi, I really could, but his career has gone south since he joined the heavyweight division. After gathering a cult following because of how much personality his Holy Emperor gimmick had, the powers that be then decide to turn face, and being a babyface is not this man's strong point. Look at this man. This is not a man you naturally want to cheer. He went from openweight champion to being a plucky underdog who choked people, and y'all know this, this man is not. And then he started bringing these weird sumo spots into matches, which I don't think worked at all. But hey, at least he still sings his way to the ring, and gives you a nice little reminder of how cool he once was. And to cap it all off, he lost to Osprey in the faction's first ever big singles match. Simply put, this is not a group of winners, and associating yourself with these lads does not raise your stock whatsoever. The best case scenario is a main event to team with these guys will raise their profile, and in the worst case scenario will make the main event look worse. So now that taking the helm of this group did not move him into fifth gear overnight, but felt more like switching lanes. Sure when it happened we went ooh, but no one's eyes lit up thinking they were looking at the next big megastar, right there and then. 2. The Split as just four guys were in the infancy and Suzuki was all over his place in the last two years really. It wasn't really clear if we should cheer or boo these guys. Taka and Kanemaru, despite being highly and rightly respected and beloved by some members of the audience, are heels. Taichi is a babyface and Doki is a... babyface, I think? Or a less distinguishable character, as Wikipedia likes to put it. And the ominous foretelling of Transform New Japan Forever made it real unclear on how we should receive this tetrad of fellas. But the moment Sonata joined, it seemed that we got an answer to that. In his post-match interviews, he told his old teammates to scram and that he had no more use for Naito. Okay, great, right, they're heels. Good stuff. This plays to the strength of all other four members of this crew, except for maybe Doki. But actually, no, he's, he's a babyface. The fans have chanted his name, and in interviews with Okada, the world champion is dismissive of Sonata and the fact he's actually changed or improved at all, and Sonata has to defend himself and say, you'll see. Okay, again, fine, that's cool. This is going to be a fresh new champion finally toppling their biggest obstacle ever. That's great, cool, that works also. But in that case, why present Sonada as a heel on the breakup? Look, I know it is always going to be difficult. Naito is the most beloved guy in the whole company, and him changing team was always going to be a hard sell. But is there really no other way you could do it? Him acting so heelish from the get-go really kind of undercut any momentum he could have had as a babyface straight from the get-go. Yes, ultimately, we are going to pick who we want to cheer and who we want to boo. See Naito circa 2013 if you really want to see evidence of that. But at least make clear what you want us to do. If we knew we had to cheer this man from the get-go, the eventual pop he got from beating Okada could have jumped up another gear into something legendary, and we remember to the end of time. 3. The Opposition Right, okay, sure, this hasn't been the greatest foundations for something, but look, look at who he's beat! Naito, the most popular star in the company. Okada, the biggest star in Japanese wrestling over the last decade. Looking at this alone, it's a fantastic start. This is how you get a man to feel special. 
you beat the best and leave no doubt in anyone's mind. This isn't a pity run. This isn't the big stars are doing something else right now so you can have the belt. You're the best. You're the champion. You are number one. But now you've got the belt, you still have to keep beating names. And sure, not all of them have to be winners, but at least some do. So let's have a look here. After winning the title, first he defended against Hiromu, who, yes, granted, he's over. But he's a junior in a company where they'd never let a junior win the big one. Next was Yoda Suji, who we knew nothing about as he was fresh off excursion. But despite that, I was screaming them to give him the belt three minutes into the match, but you know. Next up was the G1, where he beat all the new kids on the block, and also Chase Owens was there. He then loses and then eventually beats Evil, who yes, has credibility, but has go away heat from a large chunk of the fan base, and oh, Jack Perry was also there. So you're telling me you couldn't have done a Tanahashi match? A Shingo, perhaps? Osprey's not the easiest, but could you maybe have done that? Maybe even Zack Sabre Jr.? This man's record-breaking run was him beating guys you'd never seen before, who were never going to win, or were evil. I mean, sure, maybe ironically, but come on, we've seen this before. It wasn't good. In fact, it's the opposite of good. His run basically got colder and colder when it became obvious that the only match that mattered was going to be his Wrestle Kingdom match. His reign was entirely skippable. In fact, if you turned out the moment he beat Okada and tuned back in for the Wrestle Kingdom match, he would have seemed a bigger star to you than if you watched the whole year. 4. The Matches We live in a world of high in-ring expectations, especially if you're the world champion, and especially if you're the world champion of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now sure, this is subjective. You can disagree, and that's fine, and that's your right to. But this is how I think, and I have a gut feeling that I'm not in the minority. Practically everyone who has held the top belt in this company has somehow managed to live up to the in-ring expectations, which is something worthy of praise. Unless you're evil. Sorry, dude. From Tanahashi to Shingo, everyone that has had this belt has been great, but Sonada just hasn't made the cut for me. It's weird because I used to call him versus Sabre my favourite 10-minute match in the world. I've always loved Sonata short matches. Do some cool athletic stuff, tease the skull end, go to finish. Simple, great. But what if the match has to go 25 minutes? Now see that, that's where it gets a little dicey. Uh, you could try lying in the skull end for an extra 10 minutes, but we, we tried that and it, it didn't really work out. Oh, we could do a bit of that, but we spice it up by him letting go of an unconscious body and going for a moonsault instead of holding on for just a little bit longer and getting the tap out win. But we wouldn't do that, because that would make him look really, 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 really stupid. Okay, fine, we haven't quite worked it out, so what should we do for his world title run? Well, we'll do exactly the same, apart from we'll add in a Shining Wizard and a DDT that he saw off a wrestler that we don't talk about anymore. These matches just didn't meet my expectations of what a New Japan main event should be. And thus it made it quite hard to get completely emotionally invested of the Japanese wrestling scene's ace for 2023. Of course, this is all subjective, this whole video is an opinion piece, and this is probably the most debatable point on it. But for me, in the ring, he's been a step down for those who've come before over the past 10 years plus. Unless your name has something to do with lemons. 5. The Betrayal Look, star ratings aren't everything, and really it's not even who you beat. The biggest thing at the end is, are you portrayed as a big star? Are people looking at the screen saying, yes, I want to see this man fight? Whether it is, I'd pay money to see him lose, or I'd pay money to see him kick someone's ass, people have to want to see you. This is a business, and people have to want to buy the product. With that being said, this whole run feels like self-sabotage from the company. Whether it's him barely talking, him sitting next to Evil in handcuffs, or even the English commentary saying, He's a selfless guy and doesn't really crave the big spotlights. This man, this competitor, this warrior has not been portrayed as a man you have to see fight. He does not feel like a big star. This man is not presented as a larger than life superstar and that is key. He doesn't have that presence, he doesn't have that aura, he doesn't have that charisma to him. He needed all the help in the world to be presented as an equal to Naito, to Akada, to Tanahashi, but he didn't get it. Sure, this is also partially down to him. He could have carried himself a little better, worked on his promos. But the company honestly can't look at themselves in the mirror and said, we did everything in our power to make Sonada look like the biggest name in Japanese wrestling. Because you didn't. Give him a better song, flashier lights, a better costume, a ring announcer, a key to his handcuffs so he doesn't have to sit next to his number one contender like a goober. Look, it's hard to describe what makes an icon, let alone how to create one. But this isn't it. 
It just isn't. And that's the biggest nail you can put into this man's skull. And so the question is now, is it over? Is it possible for Sonata to be the biggest name in Japanese wrestling? And of course, the answer is yes. It took Naito to be completely repackaged after his initial run as a top star kind of went up in flames. There is still time. Sonata is a fantastic talent. Again, I loved his short match with Zack Sabre Jr. There's not a single match that I used to get more hyped about seeing halfway down the card than Zack Sabre Jr. versus Sonata. If this man is on a huge poster outside your house, you're going to walk past and think, who is that guy? Because you want to know. Just look at this man. He just needs a little sprinkle of something magic. Whether it's a heel turn or yet another do-over, this is not the end. This isn't a video made out of disgust. This is a call for help. This is a man so close to achieving the absolute pinnacle of Japanese pro wrestling and he's just missing a couple of pieces out of that jigsaw box. I believe in Sonata. I believe in New Japan Pro Wrestling. But this just wasn't it.